when we first, when I first started talking to Roger Michelle about uh, about filming Hyde Park on Hudson, we kind of wanted to avoid too much of a cloying, uh, warm, sepia world of that of that period. You know, we wanted to avoid the the usual sort of period period look to the film. Um, that led us really to in part to shoot digitally as opposed to on film. Um, and we wanted to, even though, it's, even though it's set just before the outbreak of the Second World War, we wanted it to have a kind of a modern feel. No, nothing too tricksy in the photography or um, we didn't feel that would serve the story, but we wanted it to, we wanted to have a, a, a we wanted to have a modern feel to it. Um, and also, uh, we were filming in the UK, even though it's set in New York State, we were filming in the UK over the summer. And uh, the fact that we shot the Alexa, I think, gave it a kind of cleaner, glossier feel, in a sense, using available light for the exteriors and things like that. So, um, so yeah, we, wanted, we didn't want to be too fixed in a, in a period look, or, the, or, or an audience's preconception of what a period film should feel like. We wanted to try and go somewhere else with it. The paintings of Andrew Wyeth were quite a strong influence, really. We also, in terms of reference, the, the midsection of the film has a, has a day for night, what ended up being a day for night sequence. It's basically a, a scene, the, the story is set during, during a weekend but a weekend that has a, a full moon. And so there's a kind of sense of lunacy um, that takes over the, the behavior of the, uh, of the characters throughout, through one of the evenings. So it was uh, the idea of going day for night allowed you to see much more of the terrain across valleys and things like that. And then also allowed the, the sun to, be, to, become a, to become a moon, uh, you know, a full moon. Um, so, that was probably one of the trickier sections to get right. And so we had quite a few references for that. Um, certainly sort of photographic ref references from sort of uh, Gregory Crudson um, through to the work that Manuel uh, Alberto Claro did on, um, on uh, uh, Melancholia. You know, again, that kind of dreamlike ethereal sort of moonlighty sort of feel so you know we had references photographic references uh, as well as uh, filmic references and of course painting references no no I wouldn't um, I think like any you know I've you know I'm hearing a lot of conversations uh, about film versus digital at the moment obviously, and I went to one recently at BAFTA and obviously the Keanu Reeves uh, documentary, which I thought was great, um, side by side. Um, no, uh, like any cinematographer, I think the thing is that we want, you know, we want everything, you know, we want a wide palette. We want to be able to shoot, I've shot things on VHSC, you know, so we want VHSC right through to like 70 mil. We want the whole gamut, you know, but it's naive. To kind of, well, I mean, it's 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 naive to think that economics don't have a doesn't have a part in it, you know. So so you know, if we want to if we want to keep shooting film, we have to keep shooting film in order to make it work. You know, it's a supply and demand. It's like anything. So um, no, I, I coming back to your question, I firmly believe that the that the uh, format should um, serve the story. You know, and. and one of my early sort of uh, influences was Anthony Dodd Mantle, his work, and the way that he approached uh, approached his work seemed to be that he, rather than being like, oh, it has to be 35 mil, you know, and having, his, you know, almost kind of before anything else, it's like, well, that seems absurd. You should fully understand the story and then objectively kind of uh, assess how, how it, you know, what the best medium is. Nobody can predict the future. Uh, I guess we can help to make it the way we want it to, you know. I guess we can, uh, yeah, help shape the future. 
I mean, you know, like I said, if we want to keep shooting film, then we need to keep shooting film, I think. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a shame, a big, big shame that Fuji, you know, uh, that Fuji aren't producing stock anymore. I hope that Kodak will continue to. Um, it's, I think we have to, you know, we have to, we have to convince the people that are paying to make the films that film is still a viable option. And aesthetically, it has a place, of course. Um, and y you know that financially, it's comparable to shooting digitally. And it's you know because economics will often out, no matter what format we want to shoot on. And we can you know we should obviously, as cinematographers, uh, be pushing as much as possible to shoot on the format we want to shoot on. Um, but we can't be we can't be blind to the to the sort of the, the economic push that's uh that's um that seems to be seems to be pushing us towards digital increasingly you know over film